Let's let's play this game. I need another heavy. I've got TB and a quick draw. I want to get fairly tight to it. Now, anybody who's going to be working range, I'm going to need you to fade right on this. If anybody's running short, it's going to stay towards the top of the call there. We're going to come out. I have you in the Griff. Griffin. Griff. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, that's the thing. we got to get to brawling range, so I may be moving us you know, right up to the hoop if we have to. Wolverine not Charlie Fiat. That's fine. Chill. 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 That's fine. It's just a fire starter. Don't try to hit him with none of them. 15 seconds. Yeah, exactly. Don't die. Guys, we're really in seconds. Don't die. Guys, 3, 2, 1. Charlie Dar, CT, yellow. Okay, come to the police if you get it. Dar, kill. Kill up, do they? Sorry, shit. So, this guy is hitting the Indy Pop. He's hitting the Indy Pop. Medium speed prepared to pull back E40 towards the E5 border. On my mark. Left side, come on! Going now, I need strikes on OP barrel. Fire our strikes up. They have come to the super line. Uh, they have three max sitting on the left side when you pull the test over. Your heating is bad. Both legs on the Griffin. Get the Griffin. Woo! Oh, oh yeah. Sorry, sorry about that. That was such a <laughs> That's right. I'm gonna spawn. I'm gonna spawn Lancey guys and Charlie. Lancey guys and Bravo. That's B2C1. This third drop is two lights, two mediums, two heavies, two assaults. What can you buy to see? Do you need buy to? Lights, watch our backs, we're gonna about base and take up position in Bravo 6. Ja, kurz Aufschalt und Delta 4, 3 Stück, 2 Medium sein, Leid, wie ich das richtig gesehen habe. Uh, make a firing line. C4 Tactical Hill, boys. Fox, Fox. Laufen unter ECM, haben 2 durchlaufen, 10, Bravo 4. And get ready to uh, hit people coming from our right. Charlie on the left, Charlie Hellbringer on the left. Okay, let's group up towards the left. Uh, we're gonna press through Bravo 3 to Bravo 4. I think they're kinda spread out. Check yourselves, make sure you've got you know, UAV cool shot. Hey, here they come, they're pushing hard, guys. It's the Crony, 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 Crony. Tesla, Tesla, Tesla. Go, go, go. Bro, got a contact here, Bravo 3. Nice, nice, nice. Marshall. I'm on Delta, Delta Griffin. We'll get cross it then, get in their face. They got a highlighter, they just push up on Theta, we need help on Theta, up on Theta! Yep, that's the noise, go, 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 let's finish this. Full pressure guys, full pressure, they're down low, go, go, they're go, down go. low in Charlie 3. Get the f***ing arm, Jackson! Jackson, cool shot. Go, 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 I got him, I got him, I got him. Okay, go, 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 B3, go, go. Echo, Echo, go, go, Echo. Get over your medium, guys, echo, get, echo, uh, get echo. echo Storm Crow, Echo Storm Crow. God, I suck as a pilot, but thank f I packed my skill. I'm sorry that you died, sweet girls, but we will send a reasonably nice letter to your family. Hello everybody, hello and welcome to today's Tournament of Stars Division D matchup between Pi, Black Sheep Squadron, and the European Dragoons. Sorry if I'm coming in a little hot there. Uh, let's see, yeah, the Black Sheep Squadron coming into this match with a win in the 1v1. They've chosen side two to start. Will they be able to take a win back home to their families or will the European Dragoons feast on a nice shepherd's pie? We'll find out soon. I'm Ivor, and with me is the answer to life, the universe, and nothing at all, Paradox42.
Thank you, Ivor, for having me here today, and um, I'm having the pleasure to support you in the cast today. I'm really looking forward to the game. We have uh, the first game, actually, in Division D, if I'm not mistaken, between Pi Black Sheep and European Dragoons. Um, I think especially the Dragoons have kind of a new composition of pilots, so it's going to be interesting to see how they perform in this division, while Pi is playing together in this um, setup for a while already, if I'm not mistaken. For sure, for sure. Um, we will, well, we'll see how it turns out. I'm pretty excited. This is my first one casting for Tournament of Stars here. Different format, some different rules going on. A win is a win, of course. A win is worth one point. But as we go down, you get more points for each mech destroyed. One mech is one point. Two mechs are three points. Three is five, four, seven. Five is nine. So this is a points-based tournament, not a wins-based tournament. And I'm really excited to see the ending. Of this tournament and and when it comes down to the line everybody just jangling for points rather than just wins and i understand this is even reflected in the game modes because we are going to see only domination games and assault games in this tournament and therefore i'm very curious how much of an in the face game style we are going to see from the teams for sure especially domination um assault is interesting i imagine one could get pretty sneaky with uh with some cappers, maybe a couple incubuses sneaking around um, with that cap acceleration. But honestly, it's it's going to come down to kills, Absolutely. I would think. Especially considering um, the the points you get for the kills. If you kill all your opponents, that's nine points. And just one additional for a win. Who cares about that if you can get them all down? That's right. That's right, indeed. I am hoping... One second. I'm sorry if there's bleed over. All right, beautiful. There was sound on the intro, beautiful. It was perfect. All right, I can breathe. Um, yeah, so we're gonna get started here in about three minutes. I'm gonna switch things over to the map strat screen here. Um, and we can talk about Emerald Vale, a new map. Uh, saw it a little bit in MOR, um, but really getting it in the first round here of TOS. What are your thoughts on this map? It's an interesting map. Um, I, I think most people know this is uh, basically cut out of faction play and modified a little bit. Um, what's important to understand is the high, the high ground on the lower and upper sides, so basically left and right of the spawn points. And um, the domination area is, of course, in the middle of the map, where we have a number of buildings, a lot of cover. Uh, still the possibility, especially for the Team 1 side, to shoot down from the Fox 3, uh, Fox 2, to Fox 4 area, basically down into the domination area. So it would be possible to establish some high ground. Um, down here in this area, basically. But of course, it's domination, so you need somebody in the circle. Both teams are probably going to send somebody, somebody in quite early. Um, on the other hand, uh, the, the Team 2 side would have the possibility to uh, position a couple of mechs up here in an arc. But let's be honest, it's we have a tonnage limitation in this drop, which is 250 tons. That's 50 tons per mech, basically, 5v5. So. I expect a big brawl somewhere in the middle, to be honest. Yep. Give me a second. Things have just um, gone a little uh, haywire with your video here. Team one <laughs> locked already before time even starts, uh, which is which is wild to me. Uh, let's see. Let's grab 150 there. They That's... are really ready to go. <laughs> yeah, they are. This is this is awesome. Um, so pardon the. Uh... Pardon the, the changing here on the stream. We're almost there. No, very Almost good. there. All right, that's probably good enough. <laughs> we'll get you in there. Perfect. All right, there we go. Absolutely perfect. Let's see. All right, so is. first team locked. I'll just, I guess, start. Okay. No, no, even my background is correct if I'm not mistaken. I need to change it later, maybe we'll see. <laughs> All right. So Pilot Black Sheep <laughs> is already moving pilots around as well. What yep. I can see so far from uh, the team one side, from the European Dragoons, they are setting up Alpha Bravo Charlie with uh, the main force in Bravo. Um, Jeez, team two locked. We might as well go ahead and watch. We are exactly at match time. Both teams are locked. I never, 
I have never. Wow. All right, let's it's do fast. it. That's so good. Let's do it. And team two, team team two was spawning Bravo Charlie, so more on the top side actually. Um, we, but in the end, it doesn't really matter on this map. They are all going to be parking in the middle, and we will see what's going to happen. Yeah, I would imagine it's mostly going to be a matter of where do they want to scout, so that they can direct everyone else, and where are they. Yes, indeed. I'm a little bit curious about the um, builds we are going to see. Well, with the with the latest patches, the meta has shifted slightly. I feel like a couple of people are still figuring out what the meta is going to be, and um, I'm a little bit curious what the teams want to bring here today, and what they are focusing on. If, for example, we are gonna see a lot of snapnose PPCs, if they still go for a lot of SMs or anything, anything else, what comes to mind, and of course. Um, if it's just mediums, or if they come uh, go with a mix of, of some lights and something more heavy. But let's have a quick look at the European Dragoons. I see um, two line, three linebackers actually, and two mislinkses. And let me check the linebackers real quick. They look like they want to do it in the face, that small pulls on the linebackers. That's a very fast drop deck, a lot of firepower. Um, Paul Myers in the Mistlings G here is sitting up high on the wall with a uh, eight heavy machine guns and four ear micro laser built, of course, and um, is trying to figure out where the enemy is coming from. While Five Black Jeep is coming in from the other side, already in the middle. Yeah, and see? they're they're I running see. Vipers and two linebackers, interestingly enough. So they are, oh. yeah. So similar thing, less weight though, um, or well, not so much less weight, but less. Armor potentially overall, I think. I guess there's Probably. those mis mislinks, but in any case, a lot of uh, a lot of machine guns, a lot of small pulse, very sort of single-minded. They're gonna eat a mech uh, like Croker. Uh, that there, mech going after see, Croker. Yes, he's engaging the mislinks of that Croker mech... already, but linebackers react right away, and here the brawl starts. And now I'm wondering if Paul is gonna be too late to the fight with his mislinks. That Fritz is taking be. a lot of damage. He could go down very early. He's rotating out. The other guy, other guys are coming in. Still, yep. big damage spread. That Car mech is Carcass focusing getting on Fritzer right now. He isolated. might get the first kill. Yes, Fr yep, Fritzer Fritz is down. down. So, one see. kill advantage for Pipe Black Jeep. I see a lot of machine Ray Wolf coming after here. Croker here as well. And going down. again. So it's Kara, one, Kark one is coming much. down as well. There we go. Kara is coming down. Croker is still alive. Um, but that mech is going down right now. Um, Pi has, a, has an, an advantage, and if they can utilize on that, and finally get a Trent. And Croker kill Trent is going down fast. Croker now as well. Yep. Focus fire is easy now. Paul is the last guy. He was definitely a little bit too late in the fight. And now it's just a question of seconds until he's going down. I don't know. Andy's going down. Paul is making him work for it. Yes, um, I'm not seeing that go ticker going down. He's using his mobility. He's got a little bit of mobility on those Vipers. If he can keep it moving. And it shouldn't be uh, enough. Grey Wolf is coming in now as well. And the pure amount of machine gun fire should be enough to kill Paul soon. But Paul getting away and picking away honestly with two mechs his percentage should be going down a whole lot more let's take a look at Andy. where his damage is he's almost like oh he lacked gray wolf yep but he's almost lacked himself he might be able to take gray wolf down now because there uh, it is just coming in too late and now it's coming down to 1v1 and minister's and legs are almost gone paul myers has oh, this yes. Paul has the potential to turn this around if he's doing uh, playing it well right now, and I think he has a good and chance. And he is. To yep. There goes one yeah, leg. leg. And now just another needs to go. Where do we have it? He takes his time. He's trying to get the leg. Minister there it shooting, is. But wow. He has no chance. All amazing clutch plays at the end there, taking down three mechs to one. Impressive. Very, very impressive. That is all I can say about that. I was sure Pi was Pi had this. But then somehow um, <laughs> the dragoons were able to turn it around. That was quite amazing. Let's have a look at the damage numbers. Yeah. Here I'll pull this. What I can see, Paul really pulled it off. Four kills for him. 399 damage. By far the highest damage. Uh, before Trent was 286. On the Pi side, we had 
544 for Minister in the YPF, then two kills. That is extremely impressive as well, followed by Gravel 307, and then the other is 200. Um, I think in, in general, maybe the a uh, little bit more armor played out, um, as you mentioned, Ivan. Yeah, uh, a little bit more. Um, interestingly enough, uh, that makes it six points to five. <laughs> so all that, and um, this match is still real close. There is no real leader here um, by much at all. All right, I'm going to send this over to Alpine Peaks here um, on the map room. Let's see here. Alpine Peaks, I mean, our next map. If you want to, we can go back to Emerald Well once real quick. Oh yeah, absolutely. And, and maybe give uh, the viewers a small impression of what we think went down. And if I'm not completely mistaken, what I saw was um, here Paul going up to the to the rocks, trying to get an idea where um, Pi was coming in from. They basically went in quite fast. I didn't notice which which road they took. I assume they went somewhere through the middle and uh, grouped up somewhere in this area, while um, the Dragoons were a little bit late to the party, lining up back here. And then the fight started over here in this area, Delta 3. Yeah, that's about right. And then it drifted over to Delta 4, Paul using those mountains to really just kind of cut off the Vipers. He could have been able to jump after Absolutely. him, but yes. he did not take advantage of that. And in the end, I think the final kill happened somewhere here in the Delta 4 area. So as, as we could see, uh, it was an extended brawl. It took a little bit longer than I expected. Uh, it seemed like at some point in the middle, especially, uh, focus fire was a bit off. In the beginning, focus fire of Pi seemed uh, a bit more accurate than the focus fire of the Dragoons, but ultimately they were able to pull it off. So, nice first drop. I'm curious about how the second goes. Yep. And um, I can imagine it shouldn't be so different from the, from the first one. What do you think? Uh, no, uh, I would imagine, uh, again, another, another brawl here, uh, it being domination. Um, we have seen some tricky plays going on with people floating around um, the mountains and I-9 there trying to use that to shoot down, but most of their force being in the center. At least that's what I've seen in some of the scrims. I really have no idea what the sort of meta play is going to be here other than, hey, let's brawl it out in the circle uh, because it is domination and you got to hold that circle anyway. Absolutely, and it's 5v5 at 300 tons max. It's still going to be... Um... Uh, a fast drop deck for sure and even if alpine is a huge map on domination that doesn't matter at all because the upper half doesn't matter the action is gonna happen down here in the domination area as you mentioned india 9 you could play some overwatch but let's be honest um you want the dts down here your percent the domination circle we're going right into the match both teams locked wow so it's delightfully quick incredibly fast i'm impressed Let's see, has the previous match even ended yet? It has not. These folks are uh, are burning <laughs> right through. It sounds like we might be a little quiet maybe on the stream. I'm going to... Okay. No, I think we're okay. Um, someone's yeah, sound, okay. sound must be a little turned down. Let's see. It's so much with these drop zones, so much of this map ends up not being used. They're so close. Andy so Mac continuing to show. On team one side again. Sure, so basically, good. if you remember the map guys, they are on the right hand side, Pi on the left hand side. And I'm going to have a quick look at the Dragoons again. And what I can see is another Mistlings, two Mistlingses, two Blood Fs, and a Veagle. And let me check what they bring. Veagle 3 ER yeah, PPC sets, going to be interesting. I'm a bit surprised. It works really choice. well, especially in a comp setting where you don't need to, you know, eat that pinpoint Agreed, damage. But yeah. in 5v5, five, five, and the other two are yeah, large laser max. And yeah. by the way, what is uh, really great to see is on European Dragoons, they had a late edition, or I, I'm, I'm not even sure if it's a late edition, late edition to the team with Exothermic, uh, um, one of the old 
big names in the com scene uh, playing MWO com since the beginning for SJR. I think he hasn't played in five years or something like that. So it's going to oh, be wow. interesting to see how is, how he's doing today. Yeah, Pi on this other side, they also came to trade with uh, three Viragos, a Hunchback, ER Large, and a Veagle with two ERPPCs. Um, European Dragoon's taking that I-9 hill. Uh, so this is going to be a trade map. No brawl. I'm, I'm kind of surprised. Me as um, well. I, I would have expected them to brawl, for sure. Yeah, and we've got Croker here with the Mistlings. I think he's getting ready to jump Grey Wolf here. Um, although he is the one that's holding the circle, so that might bring him out of the circle. Um, but he's just kind of chilling here, holding circle, waiting for the trades to resolve, and they are just getting under the way. Fritzer in the Blood Ass, uh, looking open somewhere. What's going on there? Let's see if we can find Fritzer here. Maybe it's just an arm. No, he seems to be fine. Oh, he's fine. I don't know why it's showing so dramatically 91 when Exothermic is also 91. Just fine. Yeah, he ate a little bit of a strike, but repositioned fast. They are sitting on the hill. Up high on the mountain, we have Kara and the Legal with the ERPPCs. Yeah, and that He's is a lovely place for that with a three. You can just alpha three and chill and yes. cool down with it. It is a great spot to be. Only question is if he gets a good line of sight and firing lines from up there on the opponent, because from what I can see, Pi is sitting in cover comfortably. And um, considering the timers, we can see Pi has a slight advantage. They were in the circle first, so right now they would win if this uh, draws out the whole seven minutes. Yep. The but then again, kills count. It does. So we'll we'll see. This could be. Uh, I don't know. With a with a trade on this map, and it's going slowly. This is a slow trade. Looking at Gan and the Hellbringer coming down to 82%. Um, still probably real good on armor. Let's take a look. Exo on the other Just side fine. is 83 and his blood death. Yeah, it's it's going to be a slow trade. I think this one, unless European Dragoons does a big dramatic push right at the end, this might, this might come down to that timer. That's possible. I mean, then again, it seems like right now, um, considering the setup of, of both teams, um, I have more traders, while the, the Dragoons have only three traders. I basically has four. They have this one guy hiding in the circle. So if they can take advantage of that. And by the way, Fritzor's right torso is caught already. In the blood as that shouldn't make too much of a difference, because most of his labels are probably in the left. Yep. Oh, shutting down a little bit. Might have lost a heat sink. Um, and is about to lose that torso. Actually, that'll be. And losing a laser actually right there as we speak. So Fritz are getting the worst of the trades here. Absolutely, an exothermic trading alone against four people basically with um. Kara up top still. He's repositioning um without having proper lines. He will get all the attention from Pi and probably not going to be able to win his trades either. I think the Mistlings need to make something happen now. Yeah, I would agree with that. What's the, is that Kara over here on the side of the hill now? Repositioning, trying to get a few more angles on those traders. Yep, make it less yes. of a, a trade with. Minister sitting tight in this hunchy. I don't know if Minister's really been uh, firing much, but we'll see sort of at the end on those. Um, probably not. Board. He might have took took a, a look or something like that, just his arm took some damage. Beyond that, he's as fresh as it gets. Yep, here we go. That's uh, That sounds like Fritzer's torso. I'm not even going to look there because it looks like these mislinks are getting ready to jump here. They'll have Grey Wolf in the Veagle, and again, that's two ER peeps, and then that Hellbringer, they should real have an ad really have an advantage here if they decide to push and them out. Honestly, they need to jump them now. Time is running out on them. They are losing their trades. Actually, Dragoons should stop trading at all. And get that push. Get that push organized. That Start push moving. Going. Yep. Absolutely. Even get the blood tests in just for tanking purposes. To give the Mistlings um, a bit more time to work. And uh, trying to distract some damage yep. away from the Mistlings. 
And it looks like Fritzer's in on the push. Uh, push him forward here. Going to use some of that armor. So we're right yeah, here. Yeah, he's moving up, but he's badly hurt already. He's hard. Yep, there goes the missilings right there. That mech catching it. Let's see how quickly mech, that mech is able to go down. They're going a little bit of focus. Lost on the back there, shifting the legs. They just need to get that leg. They are spreading a lot of damage. That mech is tanking perfectly well. 14%, 13. Yep. Finally, he goes down. Yep, Paul Fritz holding circle. Taking a lot of damage in the mistlings. They are dropping down. Everybody turned around on them. Greg yep. was in the vehicle at 68%. He would be yep. a good next over target. That, yeah, being over that hill, definitely uh, isolated. If Paul can get down there and help Croker. Nope, they're going to pull back. They are pulling back, yes. I mean, on the other hand, everybody was focusing them down, and Paul is pretty badly hurt as far as I can see. Let's take a look. Oh, yeah, both also, legs pretty yeah. well open. Yep. He needs to be careful. They can't afford to lose him. But if, yeah, that's a. That's there we good. go. If he can get some shots in. He, he's pushing Grey Wolf down now. They are falling down in the log round. That can be a real advantage now. Question is if um, Kara is now able to take advantage of that. Oh, Croker's going for it. Open. I think that's probably a mistake for Croker, but hey, they have to do I something think there. He wants to do something. I understand what he's doing. They are yeah. two and a half minutes and they need to, uh, to make something work. And. We shouldn't forget kills count. Yes, absolutely. That's true. That is a that's good point. A, the wind doesn't that's matter. That's one point. Two points for them. Now, yep. now we have three points on the um, side of the dragoons, and if they can preserve their max now, that's basically yeah. a win in their books, three to one in terms of that's points. True. But there goes Croker goes, uh, goes down, so it's three to two in terms of points right now. Question is, what is going to happen in the next two minutes? Fritz are walking out in the open. How's Exo looking here? Exo coming down. They, here comes that push, I think, in the last two minutes. Probably not and a bad I time. I think, if you ask me, Kara needs to get down there as well. Yep, I think uh, Kara's sitting here. Oh, Kara is real chewed up here, uh, trading against, uh, who is this over here? Uh, Gan. Gan also oh, looking yeah. really roughed up. So this is this is close in that trade battle over here. On the other hand, the Dragoons, they are all down to 30-something percent. They are all caught. Yep. Question is what's going to happen now. There goes Paul. Paul is going down against Andy and Minister. He can't pull that yep. off. Fritzer's now not going to be able to hold. it's a 2 one situation against Fritzer. Yep. And with all of them damaged so much coming in one by one, that should be over quickly. The only question is now, is Pi able to take more points in the last uh, yep. 71 seconds? Nexo's pedaling back a little bit. Kara is trying to get some shots out and trying to stay alive. Hugging the hill there. How beat up is Andy? Oh, Andy will be able to take Kara easily. That's looking like a no low number, but there's enough armor around. Yes, and but Andy his left torso is open if, if Kara is able to take that. And there Andy goes. He is one touch CT right now. Oh, he yep, lost his side torso. Andy goes down. Kara got him. Exothermic yep. and Kara working together quite well. It's two versus two, but Exo is probably going down any second as well. Minister's is, can... really open, so Minister... Exo might be able to take Minister. Exo is down. Yep. And Kara needs to play it a bit more safe now, otherwise he would throw away two more points into the direction of Pi. Yep, that is a that is a two point mech right there, and that could be the difference. But now we have six points for Pi and seven points for the Dragoons. And Kara risking it all. Oh, self no. oh my god, no. <laughs> so much toast. All right. That was two points as a gift to Pi. But oh, on the god. other hand, EU Dragoons, they were all badly caught. It, it would have been a bit lucky to save this point. For sure, for sure. Get those stats published. Take a look at the damage here. Yes. Do you want to go over the damage real quick? Uh, well, I'm. Uh, let me swap the scene to the scoreboard here. Yeah, looking at the damage, five seventy four for Gan. Uh, Andy four twelve. Gray Wolf double Ding getting eaten alive by those uh, piranhas there. A uh, bit. Looking at uh, the dragoon side, actually really high damage. Two thirty is the minimum <laughs> there with the croaker on the mislings. They. Put out so much damage, but didn't close, didn't close the deal on those mechs. It is all about that spread. Unfortunately, yes. 
I mean, they tank quite well, um, but not good enough. And I think Pine played it very, very, very well. They um, had an advantage in terms of trade max. They brought basically all traders, mm -hmm. um, while the Dragoons had the two Mistlingses sitting around for half of the match and then trying to make something happen when their uh, traders were already badly damaged. Um, I think it might have been better um, if they would have figured out quite early that Pi is basically all trade to be a lot more aggressive in the beginning. Don't even, don't trade at all, basically. Just group up and, and push them one by one. Yeah, that would have been, uh, been a little bit of a different approach. Actually, I would have been very interested to see how that goes. Um, looks That's like uh, Dragoon's over here swapping out some players. I'm going to go ahead and start their timer. Uh, there we go. Uh, and we're on the map screen if you want to talk about Polar Highline. Oh, yes, sure, of course. I mean, what we had seen here, and let me draw that out real quick, if I'm not mistaken, yes. Um, the Dragoons basically set up back here um, while I was setting up Kilo 7, Kilo 8. Some, I think somewhere at Juliet 7, they had one guy sitting in the circle here. Um, while the Dragoons were sitting more, I think it was Kilo 9 around that area. Yep, that's where their Miss Link was uh, tucked yes. in their holding circle. And they had somebody back in Juliet 6 as well on the Pi side, right? So they were kind of spread out, out nicely. Kara was sitting on top of India 9 in the beginning together with one of the Miss Links as basically his back cover so he doesn't get rushed by some kind of a brawl deck. And um, Fritzo and Exo in the Juliet 10, Kilo 10 position in the beginning, they were basically trading alone against four or five max of Pi and that didn't go well for them. Um, they kept trying to trade, they ate a couple of strikes in that area, they had to reposition, circling down a bit more into this direction. Fritzo was caught quite early, lost his side torso, they moved up further. Um, at some point, Paul went down here to Kilo 9, the Mistlings was grouped up, they tried to jump. Um, up top here, the Veagle and the, what was it, the Hellbringer as well, killed one of them. Later, the other one, they dropped Both down. Both teams into locked the and were launching on Polar Highlands. Oh, wow. Don't mean to cut they you out, but so these teams far. are moving. We don't even have time Incredible. to chat. Yep. Do we still have the map, sc uh, map uh, uh, screen up? Uh, well, uh, nope. we are, we are no, we're already on... in the game. I yes. see that. Mm -hmm. I see that. Wow. What is going on with these guys today? Uh, they are not pulling, uh, they're, this isn't, uh, Div A, we don't need all 10 minutes in between, and yes, I know there's five minutes, that's the joke. Um, that's perfect. All right. Then, again, on the other hand, even if you look at the minimap here, we are still playing Domination. It's Polar Highland, it's a huge map, but again, that shouldn't matter too much. After the drop on Alpine, I'm just curious right now, uh, right now how these two teams are going to play it out, because the drops are getting more heavy, we have 350 ton. A limit right now for for the five versus five so um it should get less and less faster and more and more um bring the uh, teams should be able to bring more and more firepower so um, interesting to see what they have here and i'm looking at the european dragoons and i see five summoners yeah um which is which is a great way to use your summoners i wonder what's on them uh pi i'm just gonna say Laser Vomit, Timbies, Laser Vomit, um, Marauder, at least I'm pretty sure, let me double check that, and a, uh, and a Viper for getting the circle. So we're going mid-range trade, if not just straight up Laser Vomit push. We'll see what happens but when I we get there. I think we are getting what everybody is looking for, oh. a really nice brawl, because these five summoners, all they bring is SRMs. There we go, all right. In which case, I would say the Dragoons probably have the advantage if they can get in range. Indeed. I, I with the uh you know what? I have the controls here now I'm thinking about it. Um Yeah, that mech and the Viper already in the middle. Having the circle, they have uh, a time advantage again, that shouldn't matter too much. The Timmies and uh, Miroda coming in in the back, a bit spread out, but not too far. So I think they are close enough together for the dragoons to How push them are, fast. Are you still showing Pi as counting? Not anymore because now they uh, the dragoons are in the circle as well. Oh wow, the minimap uh, circle must be way off because the uh, I was looking Indeed. at the dragoons well in there and it was still counting. I was like, "What's going on?" All right, it's so often, unfortunately. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, 
Let's take a look so, here. Timbers a bit on the right hand side, trying to figure out what Pi is doing, but on the left hand side we can see the four summoners coming in, pushing up on the Marauder and the, two, uh, and the Timber, uh, timber Wolf of Andy Mac. Yeah, He's here gonna we go. have a really bad surprise, placing a nice uh, airstrike here on the Dragoons, getting some damage into Paul. Oh, here Trent. we go, Grey Wolf. Grey Wolf being the target of choice, already losing something. The Marauder to see is basically half a mech already, he's dropping down, but he shouldn't be able to survive for much yep. longer. There he goes. That First mech trying to nibble on Trent here. Andy yeah, mech yeah. is trying to get some damage out on Raging Chili. And is turning around, but he should make it much longer as well. That mech getting a lot of damage out here. He does. And, and well. escaping, taking, taking something off of Kara, that'll at least slow the damage down a little bit. Yeah, but all that mech can do is trying to distract them as much as possible, maybe get a kill or two, with Paul and uh, Kara badly hurt. In the meantime, Fritzer keeps pushing together with Chili, but right now the Dragoons need to be careful that they don't get uh, don't get split up and get taken out one yep. by one. And and there goes uh, there goes Fritzer right in again, Minister taking some back shots. So there's that split. So they were able the to take care of that mech, so I think, yep, here comes the rest. It's going to turn real quick the against these, less, yes. these last two. A lot of damage off, done. Off that mech went down, gun is badly hurt, Chili should be able to take him out, and then we have just Minister dying now as well. There it is. That 5 to 1. Very decisive. On the other hand, if you're looking at the percentages on the Dragoon side, they ate quite a lot of damage, looking at 48% on Chili, 58 on Kara, 70 Dark Orange on Paul, he must be open somewhere. 100%, and you know what, as I'm looking at this, I'm wondering if I have everything backwards. I do have everything on the overlay backwards right now, no! <laughs> Alright, sorry about that everybody, there is a 5 minute delay, so if you said something I would, I totally would have missed it. Um, Alright. Take a look at those damages while I, uh... But that was a win for the Dragoons. Uh, oh, actually, I already Great. filled it in there. Um, there we're on uh, the line three there. Oh, my bad. Yeah, I already, sorry, uh, my bad for, for jumping in there. Yeah, so All looking fine. at the damages, yeah, look at this spread. Grey Wolf coming in with 41 damage in that, I'm sorry, that's match score, uh, 94 damage in that Marauder, which is a, a big oof on the double D. Everyone else trying to pull their damage, but uh, the beautiful damage spread by the European degrees and just focusing down those mechs really shows there. They're Absolutely. fantastic. Job. And what I really like about the damage on the Dragoon side, it's not too high considering the FM, so they might ha must have been quite accurate with their aim, which is quite nice. Um, they were a little bit of at, at risk um, in the uh, second half of the brawl to spread up, uh, spread out too much, and maybe getting picked out one by one. But luckily, they were able to kill that mech in the wiper, who, who was really a pain in the little wrath of the European dragoons, really dealing a lot of damage. If he would have survived longer, it could have went in a different direction. The machine guns are nasty if you have quad max. All right, so sides are swapped. Uh, we are going to assault. So frozen, where is frozen city? How have I missed it? There it is, <laughs> all right. <laughs> All right, we're there. I am going to start the timer on team one here, although I'm sure in five seconds they'll be ready. Um, yeah, so I'm going to head on over to the map room here, uh, looking at uh, Frozen City right now. Yes, and uh, right now we have finally Pi on the team one side and the Dragoons on the team two side. And... Um, since we are switching to Assault right now, it's all about these two wonderful little points and capping them, basically. And since um, this is still a huge mag uh, map and we are coming in at 350 tons right now, it's getting more heavy. Seeing the teams trade more on Alpine Peaks, what do you think? I think we are going to see more trade here as well. Uh, we could, um, we could also potentially see some, uh, some brawl if one team decides to switch over. Um, it's, 
given that it's an assault, you don't want to start the full NASCAR team one block. Go ahead and start the team. They are fast here. again. Oh, yeah. Um, I, honestly, we could see some dynamic trading and needing to move. One team just needs to send a couple mechs over the divide um, and, and can force their traders, the other team's traders, out of position. That could go for either side here. Um, so we'll, we'll see what it comes out. And in which case, it could turn into some weird, you know, ER laser push. Um, <laughs> who it, knows? It could indeed. Yeah. And with uh, Pi uh, spawning Bravo Charlie with the majority of their force in Bravo, it's even possible that they simply want to push over and um, get into the faces of the Dragoons. Yep, I from can. The, from the Bravo spawn, that would be the fastest, fastest way, basically. Yeah, Without they could also be, uh, could be setting up an arc here. I'll put mine in orange here. Uh, they could be setting up, um, oops, that's a real bad thing, but like an arc here along that line, Bravo would set up a real nice distribution yes. there as well. I mean, I know that the Dragoons like to trade in general, so I would expect them to basically set up a trade deck, and um, I wouldn't be surprised in a try to pick a different color now to make it a bit more clear. I wouldn't be surprised if they kind of set up somewhere here in this area with the possibility to move somebody over into the Delta 5 area to uh, create some angles. Very we have possible. Some Both teams locked though. Over the X6, so. Uh, Fox 7 line. <laughs> so we have team the Dragoons spawning Alpha Bravo, so further in the back. I think we, we are not so far off either. <laughs> <laughs> we shall see we shall see uh but here we go we are we are launching i really need to look at my overlays here because i'm noticing that uh Chloe <laughs> pie is 10 drops one i don't think those are necessarily the points either so i don't know exactly what that uh what that's backing up on but yeah so right now we are at uh what is this 16 17 18 points for pie and 18 23, 24, 25 points for the Dragoons. If I'm counting correctly, which is no, possible um, or not, but it looks... In, in our chart, I think, down there, you can see total points. It's 17 for Pi, 23 for the Dragoons right now. I don't think it's counting the win points there. That's where I have to do oh, the homework and see where it is. Yeah, so... Damn it. Um, well, <laughs> then you're absolutely right. Then it's 19 for Pi and 25 for the Dragoons. You were right. <laughs> Definitely the smarter person in the um, casting group. Oh, well, I, I put it together. <laughs> All right, let's see here. I'm on the Dragoon side. I'm seeing a Miss Lynx for the circle, a couple of Dire Wolves. Uh, let's see what we're looking at that. Uh, Gauss and ER Large for both of them, and a couple of Marauders, probably ER Large based as well. Yep, so European Dragoons go in full trade except for a Miss Lynx, which actually... I think you're on the pie side. I'm on the pie side. I take it back. That's the pie. Thank you. No worries. We, and we switched. That's guys, right. You might like to hear that the Dragoons are going brawl again. We have five gargoyles here. Oh, gargoyles. Right. Yeah, micro lasers. They are kind of fast. They are crossing already over to the um, assault base of Pi. And I think they are ready for another brawl. Oh, boy. This is fun. Now, how is Pi reacting? Pi is clustered up. This is not good. They need to start dispersing right now in order to be able to beat this push. Absolutely, and there we go. but they are just backpedaling. I see them backpedaling. Yep. Andy is uh, trying to cross over as far as I can see. Yep, crossover the front, is the so... move here. Make them come into that open ground. They're spreading out here, though. I think that is... There's too much cover at, where they are. At least the two diavolves go in the opposite directions. That's a good move already. Yep, and here, okay, here we go. But can they cover each other? That's going to be the crux here. They've got some more time. The gargoyle's taking some, taking some time, taking some strikes. Leonidas at 89% already, um, 86%, sorry, as it kicks down. And they're yes, going after the mech brothers, I guess, here. Andy Mech and that mech. And Leonidas basically is a pilot who likes to move in and don't think too much about getting killed. And he's really taking all the heat 
for the Dragoons here. Unfortunately, going down already before the Dragoons can get any damage in. Yep, there's a and bit of string out here. Bad for them. Yep. They are fo focus fire of Pi is really on point. Kara is going down already as well, down to 36, dying right now. Yep. Two kill advantage for Pi. Frisa is engaging. Gun in the dying wolf trying to kill him. Rage and Chili going for Andy Mac, turning away from him. Exothermic on Andy as well. They had the first kill right right now while Fritz was killing Gun. Now it's a possibility that they turn it around. It's 3 versus 3 and the Gargoyles have their uh, the strong position right now with Raging the small lasers. Raging really, really Mac. close though. Ooh, keeping it yes, even. Yes, 2-2, but it, considering the um, the DPS of the Gargoyles, they should be able to kill Grey Wolf pretty fast right now. They should not be overheating at all. Lagging yep. Grey Wolf already. I think if they can pull off a leg of one of these Gargoyles, Minister go sit on the base Force them to string out, take them one on one. I think that's the only Maybe. chance right here, but, uh, but I don't Red know Wolf how close we are to right it. Now. Exotermic is shooting the minister right now, Fritzo as well. These are two very strong, experienced comp pilots. Even if minister is trying to bail, I expect them to stay together and they even, even if they are, oh, minister yep. gets legged. So There's the leg. Basically. Yep. Wow. Great gargoyle rush. So close. Indeed. Indeed. It looked really good in the beginning for Pi. They had very very good focus fire that looked amazing um but once the gargoyles were in there was not much to do for um pi anymore to stop the loss yeah unfortunately oh you're getting those as well awesome thank you so much um so yeah going down the damages here 608 for fritzer in that gargoyle 13 for leonidas with that charge, of course, <laughs> that's kind of what we could expect. A good spread, honestly, for Pi. For, uh, let's see, 243 Absolutely. for the Dire Wolf. The Mislinks pulling 422. Great damage there. Uh, but it comes down to that kill and that DPS. If they had been able to focus their fire a little more once they got those first two mechs down there, um, Pi could have really, uh, really taken something there. Um, and one yes, of the Euro Dragoons just was able to sit in the back of a, of a Dire Wolf there and just plug away without getting shot. It's like, okay. <laughs> so... Couple of mistakes there on Pi, and that's what it comes down to in COP, those little mistakes, right? Um, yes, absolutely. And I mean, on the other hand, uh, Andy and Gan and the Diabolos, they try to spread out a bit, going backwards, of course, they want to keep their eyes on the opponent, but the Gargoyles are just so fast that they simply didn't have a chance to get away far enough to have that wide area to be able to take them out. And uh, the your Dragoons didn't fail to focus on the on the Dias early on, taking the biggest threat um, off the table and then finishing off the rest. Yeah, well done, well done, well done. Um, so let's see here. Um, okay, you're updating that. So I'll start talking about uh, for, um, Forest Colony here. One of the small maps, so much ton. Oh geez, team one locked already. All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, one of the one of these small maps um, where you see a bunch of trades. Honestly, this is another map where you can see it go trade or push. Um, and I I can't even guess with these teams anymore because we thought they might trade on a trade map, but here come the gargoyles, <laughs> right? Um, uh, there's been some uh, some chatter about ex uh, executioner deck on this map, so I'll be interested to see if any of the teams saw that little tidbit and decided to go with it because it can both brawl and trade. That being said, in scrims, we have defeated some Executioner decks, um, or mostly Executioner decks, so we'll see how that turns out. It is defeatable, but it is very strong. And after that Gargoyle it, push, I haven't seen a single Executioner. It's, it's strong indeed, and the uh, strong side of the Executioners is, of course, their speed. Um, but... But then again, what needs to be considered, they are Klamex. They don't have a lot of armor quirks or anything like that, so they are a bit more squishy than their inner sphere counterparts. And what I'm, st what I still would like to see is what what we might all have encountered in quick play lately is something like a uh, um, snuff nose PPC, any later or anything like that. Um, oh, I see, well, we can't me, because I it's a clan, a it's a clan tournament, <laughs> so we yeah, can't see that. You're right. I uh, keep forgetting that. Yeah. All right, both teams locked. We're just going to go ahead and launch again. Here we go. Boy, we just can't. These teams not giving us enough time in the middle. All right, well played. They don't give us a lot of time. But what I was able to see was that Pi was uh, spawning with the majority of their force in Charlie, so on the land side, basically, while your Dragoons are spawning Alpha Charlie, which is on the Team 2 side, on the water side. So I wouldn't be surprised to uh, see a bit more trade from the Dragoons and a bit more of Brawl from Pi. 
Are we on the wrong map? Uh, we are on the wrong. Oh, damn it. All right, Sorry, we'll get this fixed. That. This is my, yeah, my fault. <laughs> both both of ours it's both of our responsibility to have a look at that yep but but these teams don't give us a break what's going on <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right blue team is gonna kill themselves and we'll get this over with all right faster error oh well oh might as well sit the tab and see how quickly uh I can uh, get all that team damage. Yeah, that's going fast. Pies killing themselves quite quickly here. Andy Mac left over. There we go. There we go. Unfortunately, drop decks are going to be spoiled right now. Yep. Um. So, but. But this is part of comp on the other hand. These kind of things happen to teams and sometimes you need to react. And if we just have a look at what the teams would have brought, we would have seen an all executioner drop deck on the Pi Black cheap side and the Blood S executioner wheel drop deck. So basically a range drop deck as far as I can tell from uh, from, from uh, here, yeah, larges and PPCs on the EU Dragoon side. And that would be exactly what we expected after we saw the spawn points Brawl on the Pi side, range on the Dragoon side, and right now it's down to the teams to make the best of the situation, come up with, they can do the same again if they want to, or they can uh, they can come up with an alternative, can they? Or do they need to bring the same? What do the rules say about that? If you have a redrop, they are allowed to change, right? Uh, I believe so, but both teams going for it. Um, off we go. Oh, um, well. Yeah, uh, that being said, I think 475 is a very specific drop tonnage, so I can't imagine it was all that spoiled, um, at least for Pi. Um, they might just have seen the end screen. Yes, potentially. But I would imagine these guys are not necessarily going to take that advantage, um, but we'll see. Yep, so here's our Xs. Anything weird or interesting about that large pulse yeah these guys are going for a full-on push no trade and push on the pie side yeah they want they want to bring the action absolutely and on the dragoon side with the blood as as expected we see yeah larges on them the executioner of chili is yeah ppcs and some yeah micro pulse lasers Yep, setting it and off. Of course, Kara in his favorite beagle with the RPPCs as well. Uh, oh, but the uh, executions are coming in already. Oh yeah, they are. They are pushing hard, getting those shots off. It's going to be up to uh, to the dragoons um, to hold this one. So let's see how they do. And actually, right now it would be their turn to rotate out to the water wall right now. Right, and their their rotation is delayed a bit here way too much i think from what i can see here right now how far uh pi is moving up already they should be able to win this against uh, the dragoons i would agree with that they they're, make they're so close mistakes. already and they're relative Ooh, is gan legged all right gan that changes legged, it yes. a little bit Brits are gonna hang out up top. He, still, he still has two large pulses and we saw on the gargoyle push you can take some initial um losses and still turn it around it's, if you have the firepower of the small lasers Definitely true, definitely true. Um, but are dropping down. I'm seeing a lot of percentage disparity here. Uh, yeah, Dragoons need to need to start moving, though. Um, maybe focus down that mech at this point. Ritzer, I think, is... Uh, oh, is he going to be ignored? Not well, not mistaken, anymore. Andy is lagged as well. What, uh, what the Dragoons are doing here is quite smart. They are focusing legs. They are trying to leg the opponents, and then they move on to the next. Yep. Yeah, that slow it down. Is, has two open legs as well. If they're able to pull that off, um, they can they can actually win this. But Grey Wolf and Minister are still up. They still have their legs. And yep. the Dragoons are kind of clumped up right now, which In, is very, very dangerous for oh them. Oh, yeah. 
And Andy is Andy is like one touch on that leg. Got to guard it. Ooh, Raging Chili taking a lot of hits there from Gan. And here we go. We're spread out on the water a little bit. And the push is, quite frankly, stalled. And they're capping. What's the I is capping. Is but can they cap this? Uh, well, it is all pressure at this point, right? They've got those XCs with those clan pulse lasers, which can relatively snipe. There's that a lot of pressure right here. So it's four versus four now. Question is, is are the dragoons able to stop the capping? All they need to do is damage Minister and Grey Wolf enough to stop it every once in a while. Maybe uh, drop a few, drop a few strikes. Leonidas is down. Raging Chili yep. is pretty hurt. So yep. this might actually is going more into the direction of Pyre right now again. Yeah, that pressure. Hero degrees have to do something, right? Or else they're and gonna get capped. Andy is playing yeah. a great game right now. He killed Shitty first, then he's fighting off Leonidas yep. Exothermic coming in right now. In Meanwhile, he's been death. legged for like, what, two minutes at this point? Yes. So, and, and that leg has been open. He's been so close to death this entire time and just pumping out and damage Exothermic on this Exothermic is coming in with an open left torso. He's yep. losing it right now. Leonidas died as well. Andy Mac is actually pulling this off right now. <laughs> Way to Just go, the Andy right here. leg. All right. Let's see if Exothermic is trying to get that leg, but Andy is shielding quite well. Exo is going down as well. Andy's leg is cherry, cherry red, but it's only Kara that is left for the Dragoons. He's yeah. able to kill Andy at least, so that's two more points for, the, for them. That's quite important for the Dragoons. But now it comes down to killing Kara for... Um, hi. Or hi. And yep. Kara is not looking healthy anymore Oof. as well. There, he there goes. it is, real quick. Was that legs? Yep, legs. Well played Five to kills both to two kills. Yeah. Yes. All right. Let's go. Um, let's go ahead and get that info up here. Um, let me set up the scoreboard here. We can take a a last look here. To the scoreboard. All right, looking at those damages, 724 from Andy Mac and a legged executioner. Whew, putting it out. Um, let's see, 367 lowest Grey Wolf on Pi. That being said, looking over at the Dragoons, 292, 282, 487, 589, 505. Honestly, good damage all around. A lot of armor to be had, uh, but it comes down to taking that time and then Pi exerting that pressure right when they needed to in order to uh in order to secure that win uh and that last Absolutely. one and i would say um a lot comes to, uh, came down to andy here he really bought the difference maker for for pi in this situation staying alive this long in elect executioner pulling off 724 damage getting the kills killing leonitis killing exothermic when they were coming in that was that was huge for them it was it was absolutely huge um so yeah how are we looking at the end of this now that we actually have to do calculations here um if i'm not mistaken pi won the one we won yes. and two of the drops and uh, in terms of points in total they should be at 33 points yep that's what well, it's looking at to me yep and the dragoons um won three drops and they should be at 38 points in total. So very, very close, really. Uh, three to two Andy. in the victories and the points really close for the first round of this tournament, um, which is which is a big deal. Well played, both teams. Absolutely. That was a great start in the division, I would say, and I'm really curious to see more of these teams. Um, both of them executed their strategies uh, very, very well. It was a, was a very even match, could have went in, into both directions. And what I have to say, what I really like about this new format is that kills count so much. Oh, yeah. And we got Fritzer and Gan in for interviews, so I'm going to drag him down here. Hey, hello, Fritzer. Hello, Gan. Welcome to the room. Hello. And well played, both teams. Hello, hello. And sorry about that, uh, that misdrop there. <laughs> Uh, no worries. It happens. Yeah. But uh, well played for both teams. I think uh, we saw that XE rush, which had been uh, talked about um, a whole bunch, and a lot of a lot of interesting decks. So my question to you is, with 5v5 and with kills counting, what are the things that are going through your minds as these matches are 
are progressing, right? Are you looking at the points or are you just looking to secure those wins? Um, my team, F, we are, we want to secure the wins first because wins get you more points than a single kill, but the points are added bonus on top. So we want, we want it to win. But yeah. Yeah, basically we go in for a winning strategy um, to win the match in the match, which both means in the tra trade or, you know, the brawl. We need to win both of them. Um, but mostly, like, how do we control the map or how do we push our agenda on the map? That's the primary objective for us in this case. And since it's 5v5, it's it's easier to do a slip up and it pays pays dividends in the end. Mm -hmm. for sure and that um so thinking of of controlling the map i'm thinking of that gargoyle rush how did that uh that was that was a pretty dramatic turnaround i think um <laughs> late in the game what are you what are you what were you what were your thoughts going into that match or actually in the middle of that match because uh um after we saw them do their summoner rush on polar highlands i was confirmed that they were either going to do a xe rush or something else along those lines so we originally lined up to do um, the uh, large laser trading builds, um, and at first we would have like spread out a mall along in the city to shoot at them from there. But was that gargoyle rush? We just had to fall back and try to get them into open ground to where we could just shoot them. So, and especially yeah. in the beginning, you did that quite well. Um, yeah, you focused fire, fire on the first uh, first two gargoyles. Um, but once they got in, uh, yeah, the once, US of once, the Zagos mm -hmm. obviously paid off. Yes. Yeah, by the time that they got into us, um, I know me and my Dire Wolf, I was starting to get heat capped at that point. Mm. And mm. I can pop a cool shot, but that's I'm still firing four year large lasers. So it is what it is. It was it was fun to see. Oh, for sure, and the and I mean, but you you came back on uh, Frozen City there, applying that uh, applying that pressure, um, which was delightful. But yeah. one of the things I have to say, Paul, in that Mist Link's first match on Emerald Vale, holy turnaround! <laughs> it looked like it was over three v one, and things turned yeah. around. I, I yeah. hats off to Paul on that one. That's, yeah, that that was, was just impressive. That was really well done. Yeah, he played that to perfection um, good maneuverability good trades kept using the uh, the jumps get around the buildings try to get, mimic the movements of the vipers so yes, he, he yeah. was actually able to always disengage the two vipers again and then get back into a situation where, where we, he was in a 1v1 situation and that is uh, it seemed to us at least like how he pulled it off in the end because yeah. the vipers were simply not fast enough to follow him and get a real 2v1 situation on him especially in the enclosed space between these uh, big uh, hills mm -hmm. it also helped that his strike scared away one of our viper pilots mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because he was already legged, or he was his legs were open, and that strike scared him, so he ran around while the other viper ran in, and that created a one v one, which was indeed. more beneficial to him. So yeah, that was really good playing on his part. Then again, I would like to ask Fritzer, um, especially in Alpine Peaks, when you, when did you figure out that Pi was basically all long range, and um, what did you make out of this? Uh, we got the information in the first 20 to 30 seconds. Uh, we sent one of our uh, mistlings straight up the hill. And he got the information for us in about uh, maybe, say, 20 seconds. We knew exactly what they were running and where they were. Um, for us, the problem there was that we couldn't really get our uh, Vapor Eagle uh, up on that hill to a position where he could actually put uh, some pressure on the enemy sides, which were mm. our hope. Um, he could have moved up, but then he would get focused. He was trying to move different directions, so probably a missed place on my part to put him there. Um, then they had the timer on their side, and we thought, well, let's try to get the kill so we get 1v1, and the lights took one guy out. and Well, they felt that they had the advantage out, so they kept moving on. And then it ended up being a 2, 2v2 kill, so we thought, well, let's just go for it and see what we can make of it. 
So it's more of a desperate last push there, but who could have played it conservatively and taken a 2-1 um, win in the points category, so to speak. Mm. But, I mean, then again, you were kind of kind of down in terms of percentages already and probably made the best out of the situation at that point. Um, what To us, it seems like Pai Gun on, on your team, on your side, um, you had very good control of the whole area, just the push. Um, from the mislinkers pushed the two guys off the off the mountain a, a little bit. What uh, what was going on on your side at this point of time? What um, was your team thinking? Because it seemed to us like it got a bit chaotic uh, for a short period. Um, we were telling the two guys on top of the hill to drop off top of the hill, while me and Andy just focus on the mislink slugs. That was the plan. Um, but they they kill one of the hellbringers, and then it's like they carried away and then they came back for the vapor eagle yeah and we were just telling him to get off the mountain just get off of there get out of there we will cover you just get out <laughs> and eventually he did so yes but um, you sound like for, for, for your taste it took a little bit too long right <laughs> yes yes just a little bit but we still won and the entire time i was basically just telling a hunchback pilot to just stay in the circle just stay yeah. in the circle do not leave that circle yeah, it, it uh, went, uh, played out perfectly well. I think actually Alpine was the only map where uh, Traytech won because both teams basically bought some version of a Traytech. Um, you, of course, on the Pi side with, with a lot of more uh, blue lasers than on the Euro Dragoon side, and this turned out perfectly well for you. Um, for all the other drops, we saw a lot of brawl. Um, what is uh, your two, uh, two teams' expectation for the rest of the tournaments? Do you think you will see more brawl, or do you have a couple of ideas for different kinds of kinds of strategies already? Um, it depends on the map, but I expect uh, if we play um, Frozen City again, that it's just going to be a brawl, or um, Polar Highlands, just brawl. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm leaning more towards now, after seeing yeah. uh, what EU did to us. Yeah, I can agree on that one. It's going to be both the map, but also the tonnage you have to play with. Yes. Uh, it also it um, our gargoyle rush was basically well, we copied another team that we actually scrimmed uh, because we were also doing a trade map on that one, just p picking lots of blue lasers, gauze, um, and they just took this against us and just walked straight over us and was like, yeah, okay, this works forget about the trade. You have five mechs, you have this tonnage, let's take that one and go. So it's going to be, the tonnage also depends on how you want to play around with it. You can do, do like we did, you have five mechs across the board with the same tonnage, same loadout, or you switch it up with having something heavier or something light. So it's it's going to be the tonnage and the, the map that makes the decisions, and also what the team's comfortable in doing, of course. Absolutely, and especially on the clan side, we have so many fast mechs, uh, therefore Brawl is al always on the table. All right, everybody. Well, thank you, Fritzer, and thank you, Gan, um, for the interviews. Thank you, Pai, and thank you to the Euro Dragoons for the matches. They were delightful uh, to watch. Um, and we are, I don't know if there's anything coming up right after this in terms of comp, but there will be some in a few hours, another whole batch, uh, followed by a whole lot of matches tomorrow. So stay tuned to MWO Leagues and MWO Leagues 2 for a bunch of those matches. And uh, have a great night. Have a great day, everybody. And we will catch you all later. And thank you to Paradox for running this cast with me. Greatly appreciate that. Thank you for having me, Ivo. Great. Let's, let's play this game. I need another heavy. I've got TB and a quick draw. I want to get fairly tight to it. Now, anybody who's going to be working range, I'm going to need you to fade right on this. And when anybody's running short, it's going to stay towards the top of the call there. We're going to come out. I have you in the Griff. Griffin, Griff. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, that's the thing. we got to get to brawling range, so I may be moving us you know, right up to the hoop if we have to. Wolverine of Charlie Fia. It's fine, oh chill, God. chill, look out, oh man, it's fine, it's just a fire starter. Don't load it in, but no, no. 15 seconds. Yeah, exactly, don't die. Guys, 15 seconds, we're don't we're die. Guys, 3, 2, 1. Charlie Darcy, T, yellow. Okay, go for Charlie, see if you can get it. There, to your left, there's there. Sorry, Richard. 
So this guy's hit the Indy Park. He's hit the Indy Park. Medium speed prepared to pull back E40 towards the E5 border. On my mark. Left side! Come on! Like now, I need strikes on OP barrel. Wire our strikes up. The hub group is going to be in. Uh, they have three max sitting on the left side. Will you post test over? We're cheating is bad. Both legs on the grip. Hit the grip, man. Lancey guys and Charlie, Lancey guys and Bravo, that's B2C1. This third drop is too light, two mediums, too heavy, two assaults. What's in your brighter scene? Is it in your brighter? Uh, lights, watch our backs, we're gonna about base and take up position in Bravo 6. Ja, kurz aufschalt und Delta 4, 3 Stück, 2 mediums, 1 light, wie ich das richtig gesehen hab. Uh, make a firing line. C4 tactical hill, boys. Fox, Fox. Laufen unter ECM, hab zwei durchlaufen, 10, Bravo 4. And get ready to uh, hit people coming from our right. Charlie on the left, Charlie Hellbringer on the left. Okay, let's group up towards the left. Uh, we're gonna press through Bravo 3 to Bravo 4. I think they're kinda spread out. Check yourselves, make sure you've got you know, UAV cool shot. Hey, here they come, they're pushing hard, guys. It's decode, 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 decode. Tesla, Tesla, Tesla. Oh, got a contact here, Bravo 3. Nice, 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 Marshall. I'm on Delta, Delta Griffin. We'll get cross at them, get in their face. They got a highlighter, they just push up on the Theta. We need help on Theta. Up on Theta. Yep, that's the noise. Go, go, go. Let's finish this. Full pressure, guys. Full pressure. They're down low. Let's go, down low in Charlie 3. Get the f***ing arm, Jackson. Jackson, cool shot. Go, 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 go. I got him, I got him, I got him. Okay, go, 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 B3, go, go. Echo, echo, go, go, echo. Get over on your medium, guys. Echo, echo, echo. Echo, storm pro, echo, storm pro. God, I suck as a pilot, but thank f**k I packed my skill. I'm sorry that you died, sweet girls, but we will send a reasonably nice letter to your family.